This is 16.3 Female Reproductive System Notes. The essential question is, what structures make up the ovaries, what are their functions, and what regulates their functions? The function of the female reproductive system is to produce the female gamete, just like the male reproductive system is one of the functions is to make the male gamete. The name of the female gamete is ovum, which is singular. Ova is the plural, which are the egg cells. And there is an additional function to the female reproductive system. And then the fact is that the not only does the female have to produce the female gamete, they also have to prepare the, um, the body, the reproductive organs, to be able to support the uh, embryo or the fertilized egg once pregnancy occurs. And then even after the pregnancy, then they have to, the body has to uh, nurture the baby even after birth. Ovaries are the main primary sex organ in the female. Just like the males, there is a ductus system, and it is a delivery system for the female gamete, which includes the uterine or the fallopian tube, the uterus, and the vagina. The external portion or the external genitalia, the reproductive organs, are the mons pubis, the labia, the vestibule, and the clitoris. The ovary is the primary female gonad. It is equivalent to the testes in the male. They are almond-shaped and paired, and they're located on either side of the uterus, suspended by various, type, uh, various ligaments. Just like the testes, the outer capsule is called the tunica albuginea. The outer portion of the ovaries is called the cortex, and they house the oocyte. And the oocyte is surrounded by a structure called the follicle. So the, the oocyte or the egg cell plus the outside covering is called the follicle. The inner portion, the medulla, contain many loose connective tissue and large blood supplies and nerves to nourish and nurture the uh, developing oocyte or the egg cell. The stages, the main stages that the oocyte or the, um, the ovum goes through, the first one is the, the premature, is the oogonium, just like the spermatogonium, that is the immature sperm cell. The immature egg cell is called the oogonium. And then there is the primary oocyte. And then comes the secondary oocyte. And then the final uh, mature egg cell is called the ovum. Recall in meiosis and even in the process of spermatogenesis, one cell splits twice, which result in four cells. So in spermatogenesis, all four of those cells will become sperm cells. But in females, only one out of those four cells would become an ovum, and the other ones will be called polar bodies. And polar bodies are not going to be egg cells, but they are just cells that will be able, um, their function is to support and nurture the one ovum that's chosen to become the uh, become fertilized or ovulated during uh, release during ovulation. There are three ligaments that support and anchor the ovary to the surrounding structure within the pelvic wall, pelvic cavity. And the first one is the suspensory ligament, which is here, located here. This ligament anchors the ovary to the sides of the pelvic wall so they're not moving around within the pelvic cavity. The next one is called the ovarian ligament and it's this one right here. This one attaches the ovary to the uterus. Then the last one is called the broad ligament and this entire yellow area is called a broad ligament, and you can kind of guess where it gets the name from. So it kind of anchors the fallopian tube and kind of completely houses the ovary and, the, and then attaches to the side of the uterus. Oogenesis is the process of producing ova or egg cells. Remember, ova is the plural of ovum. In females, all of the eggs that they're ever going to have is already present at birth, and which means that the egg cells form while the baby, the female, 
is still within the mother's womb. Then at puberty, they start releasing those eggs, and that is called ovulation. And then at menopause is when they will stop releasing eggs. So because either the eggs are not viable anymore or they run out of eggs to be released, and that's when menopause hits and they're not able to have any more children. Um, again, the oocytes are the actual egg cell and the the covering that they grow in, is that the covering and the egg cell together is called a follicle. And then right before the egg cell is released during ovulation, the name of that mature follicle that is released is called a graphene follicle. Some words to know. Remember the first immature egg, whether you're talking about a sperm cell or an egg cell, the first stage is actually called the primordial follicle. And that follicle contains the follicle cells, which will eventually become the egg cell, the oocyte. Then as that primordial follicle develops, it becomes the primary follicle. Remember, follicle is the oocyte inside, including the outer shell. Those two together is called a follicle. Then as that primary follicle develops, it becomes the secondary follicle. Then just before ovulation, which is the release of egg, it is called the graphene follicle. Once the egg is out, so here's the egg cell that has been released out of the graphene follicle, right here. The corona rotiata is the structure that kind of surrounds that released egg. And the corona radiata means the radiating crown around the egg cell. Once the egg has been released, the remaining shell is called the corpus luteum. And then that corpus luteum eventually will degrade, degenerate, and will become the corpus albicans. So that is basically the, the cycle of the egg cell as it develops inside the ovary. The same sex hormones that regulate the male reproductive organs, the names are the same. Their function is slightly different. So just like in the male, the gonadotropin releasing hormone is released by the hypothalamus in the brain and it stimulates the release of a luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone from the pituitary. Remember, follicle stimulating hormone stimulates the testes to produce sperm in the male while follicle stimulating hormone in the female stimulates the ovaries to produce and not produce but mature, start the maturation, and the, starts the oogenesis, the primary follicle, will, which will become the secondary, and then the whole process. Luteinizing hormone, remember, in males, uh, triggers the production of testosterone. In females, the luteinizing hormone will have a peak right before ovulation. So luteinizing hormone, when there is a, a sudden peak uh, um, a rise and a sudden fall, that's what triggers ovulation, which means that it's releasing the uh, mature egg cell. And out of all of the egg cells that are in the ovary, only one will be triggered to mature, go through the whole st um, process of oogenesis and be released. So every month, there will be only one egg cell that will be released. Remember that both luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone are released by the anterior pituitary gland in the brain. Um, just like in males, the inhibin, it decreases release of the follicle stimulating hormone by the anterior pituitary, which will stop the, you will per inhibit the, um, the, the oogenesis. Estrogen is the primary female sex hormone and it is released by the developing follicle and it is um, it triggers the release of follicle stimulating hormone when there's low levels of estrogen 
and high level causes release of luteinizing hormone and gonadotrophin releasing hormone. Uh, other effects of the estrogen is it thickens the uterine wall, which is getting ready for pregnancy, and causes secondary sex characteristics such as breast development. Just like in males, it causes a development in the skeletal muscle growth and bone thickening, but also it causes breast development and widening of the hips, which are both um, getting the body for ready for pregnancy and childbirth, and appearance of bodily hair, increased fat beneath the skin, and onset of menses, which is your period. Another sex hormone is progesterone. It is triggers the suppression of the hypothalamus from releasing gonadotrophin releasing hormones. And the main function of the progesterone is there is a great spike after ovulation. And what it does, it, it thickens the uterine wall and gets it ready for implantation. Remember, implantation is when a fertilized egg buries itself in the, in the uterine wall. Estrogen inhibin and progesterones are also released by the corpus luteum, which is the shell that is left over after the mature oocyte has been released. So again, the hypothalamus is responsible for releasing gonadotrophin-releasing hormone, which stimulates the pituitary to release luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone. Also, high levels of estrogen will also cause the hypothalamus to release gonadotrophin-releasing hormone. Know that the estrogen is released by the developing follicle and, and the corpus luteum afterwards. But progesterone is mainly released by the corpus luteum, not by the primary follicle. So there is a difference in the release and levels of estrogen and progesterone. And they both help in preparing the lining of the uterus for implantation, which is the bearing of the, the um, released eggs into the uterine wall. 16.3 notes homework. Number one, what are the two major structures of the ovaries and what are their functions? Two, what organ releases luteinizing hormone and the follicle-stimulating hormone, and what are their functions in the female reproductive organs? Number three, what organ releases estrogen and progesterone, and what are their functions?